When creating a roof, make sure you left mouse click on the roof tool and then in the info box we can see that all the default settings are filled in for this particular type of roof that we're about to create and I can just use my wheel to scroll through all of those of course or use the, the bar I showed it previously on a Macintosh but I'm on a PC now so if I double click for the sake of clarity I'm going to double click on the roof tool and then this palette comes up first of all we have the favorites palette so if I click the, the favorites button the apply favorites little palette comes up and basically the favorites feature allows you to save and easily recall default tool settings so if you choose a stored favorite you can create an element that has been or has the same parameters and attributes as the favorite so it's a quick way to work next we have the geometry and positioning in the geometry and positioning we're describing the physical attributes of the roof where it should be sitting what it should look like and how it'll look in 3d so first of all the pitching height here is 3 meters that's the relative base height what that really means is that from a zero datum point to the underside of the roof it will be 3 meters and if I can just show that on the floor plan I'm just going to go OK now if I hold my shift key down without pushing any buttons on my mouse the icon the mouse icon becomes a magnet and we can see roof comes up in the little palette there and roof pivot line elevation says 3 meters now that is actually the dark blue line in the middle of that roof just over here changes to a wall if I move near it but we can see that that's the pitching line we can see a little halfway marker in the middle of the pitching line and that basically says that the roof that little marker is pointing up this way so it's saying the roof is climbing to in this direction and to the right hand side of that is the overhang if, if we can see that in elevation cross section elevation we see that to the left we have the roof rising that's the three meter point where the pitching line is sitting right on top of the wall and to the right is the overhang and there's a zero height datum which um, is just off the page there all right so if i put that back there then we move across to the geometry so at the moment i might just select this roof then i'm going to open it up and over here we can see that the roof is 20 degree pitch and the thickness of the roof on the plumb cut or vertically through the material is 197 and the actual material thickness is 185 and if i was to change the pitch of the roof let's say to 28 degrees for example you'll notice that the material stays at 185 because it's a constant and because of the pitch change this material has actually gotten quite a bit thicker so I'm just going to put that back to 20 degrees now you'll notice that these two figures are greyed out so we can't edit those that's because this sheet roof is actually a composite if I want to edit that I have to go into the composites dialog under options and edit the composite but if I just want to change the thickness of the roof I can expand the floor plan and section tab and then the structure tab and over here we have the cut fill it says sheet roof if I was to change it from composite to just an ordinary fill so airspace they become white again and now we can edit it so I'm just going to go back and put that back to sheet roof and we can see that they're grayed out again and then we go to show on link to stories now this is similar to the dialog in the slabs that we've already covered but basically you can show the roof on your own story one story up one story down a number of different options there as well as the custom where we've got even more control over how the roof will look in the floor plan area so i'm just going to go cancel there then as I expand the floor plan and section dialog box we have the floor plan display now there's five options in here projected projected with overhead cut only outlines only and overhead all the best way to describe these is by showing you this image and this is five different views of the same column the first column is projected with overhead the second is just projected third one is cut only fourth one is outlines only and then overhead all 
I'm just going to get rid of that. So you've got a fair bit of control over how you can show the roof. And so I'm just going to put this back to projected and we'll see that the entire element becomes visible again. Now in the show projection dialog there's three options here, to floor plan range, to absolute display them and entire element. We're going to talk about these a little bit later when we're going over cutting planes. So I'm just going to leave that on entire element at the moment. Then as I go down to structure, over here we can define if we cut a cross section through the roof as we have over here. That's the fill that it will use, or the, in this case it's a composite. I can also use a fill, it's just it's easy just to select anything you like. There's lots of fills there and you can make up your own. Once we're happy with the fill, I might just collapse this so I've got a bit more room. And if I go to cut surfaces and expand this a little bit, we can see exactly how this composite will be displayed when we cut a cross section through it. So first of all, the cut fill pen, I can override that and change it to any pen I like. You can see the immediate effect that that's having on it already. However, when I set this composite up in the options composites window, which we'll get to later, I actually set it up with particular settings. Now if I want those settings to override this setting here, I can just click that dialog box there it will override the composite settings that I'm setting up here. So if I uncheck that, I'm just going to change that back to grey. And we can work through each one of these dialogues. We can see the immediate effect that that is having on the composite. This has the same effect on fills as well. Now, when a cross section is cut through the roof, we can make it very clear where that intersection is taking place. If we define the cut line by I'm just going to change this to pink and if I push OK now and I go over here we can see where that cross section is cut through this roof it's pink now so if that cross section line was to be moved I'm just going to show that elevation marker there if I grab that, move that out of the building now, and I go back here, we'll see that there's a totally different view of those same elements. So that's what the cut line pen does. Once again, I can override the structure settings, and that option is there for all of these different parameters. Now the separator line, uh, the lines in between the composites, so if I wanted to change that as well, once again, you can see the effect that that has on it. So. I'm just going to undo that again, change it back to grey. So that's what it looks like in cross section. So in summary, the cut fill background and the cut fill pen relate to how that cut fill looks in section elevation. The cut line is the actual line when the cross section or elevation line goes through the building or through the element and the separator lines are the actual lines within the composite if the composite has any. So when I change that to just a straight fill we can see a lot of those dialog boxes have gone because it doesn't have separator lines and it's a it's a much simpler object to deal with. I might just put that back to sheet roof composite and we see all the dialog boxes are back. Then I'm going to collapse that and go to outlines. Now outlines defines how the roof will look in floor plan so the uncut line I can change it to I'll just change it to a dash line to illustrate the effect I'll just put a pink line around the outside now the overhead lines are not applicable here so if I click OK and deselect it we can see those lines are now pink so I'm just going to select it again hold the shift key left mouse click on it and I'm just going to take that back to grey and back to a solid line. Then the cover fills, if I collapse that, the cover fills, if I uncheck that, it all the parameters disappear, but if I check it, we can see that we've got a cover fill and I can choose any cover fill that I like. I've actually chosen sheet roof to for this particular roof. 
but I can override this with a surface fill that I may have set up in the materials dialog box which we cover materials in another movie on this DVD the cover fill pen so I can change the pen that I'm going to draw the hatching with so just to show you uh, I'll leave that like that cover fill background once again I can change the cover fill background pen I'll change that to light grey and see the effect of that then more importantly the cover fill orientation now I can link to Project Origin or I can link to Fill Origin. Now I've actually got this selected at the moment. So if I push OK, we can see this little handle here and I can move that around. So essentially I can have the fill going in any direction I like and starting from any point I like as well. So I would grab it from this node with the, the cross on it. I can move the origin of the fill and the second icon I can change the angle of it. So if I go back to that, I'm going to go over that a bit more in detail when we go over fills. Then I can also align with slope. So if I've got two bits of roof, perhaps on a hip roof, it will align the fill so it's always going up the slope and I can also distort it with the slope so if you've got a tile hatching or something like that it'll get closer together as it goes up the roof in, to give it a false sense of perspective so once you've got all those checked I'm going to collapse that collapse floor plan and section and I go to the model the model similar to the walls but in, in the fact that it has three surfaces the top surface around the side and the underneath surfaces once again I can left mouse click on that and select a huge variety of materials and you can make your own materials very easily and we're going to go over that in another movie on this DVD we can also adjust the roof edge angle by clicking this icon gives us a right angle to the rafter and this gives us the vertical plumb cut the custom setting at this stage is not available. To make it available, we can just go OK, go to the floor plan, and as my cursor goes over the edge, as the Mercedes cursor comes up, I can left mouse click on it and click on this icon here, and that says set roof edge angle. Let the mouse button go, and we can see we've got vertical, perpendicular, horizontal, custom. I can click custom and change the angle to anything I like and I can also apply that to all edges if I want. So let's say OK. And now when I go back there, the custom is available. Listing and labeling. Once again, this is left for another section. I can also label the roof as I place objects down. That's under the label tool movie on this DVD and and finally we can put the roof on any layer we like it's just a matter of left mouse clicking on it and selecting the layer that you want to put your roof onto and that's basically how we set up a roof